Kellen Mond and the Minnesota Vikings preseason is officially over, and obviously when you have a rookie quarterback in the preseason, you are a lot of the times trying to find any positives you can, and the case is certainly the same with Kellen Mond. And in today's video, we are going to be breaking down his preseason week 3 performance against the Kansas City Chiefs, and it didn't start off on a good note to say the least, as Kellen took over at the start of the second half and his very first throw of the night was an interception, and of course we are going to be breaking that play down and a lot of others as well. So without further ado, let's dive right in into the week three Kellen Mond preseason breakdown. So as we said, the very first throw of the night, this is a picture from that play. Kellen was throwing to the tight end Zach Davidson, and why I do think this is a little concerning moving forward, granted Kellen in his rookie year at most, will be a backup to Kirk Cousins, or at absolute worst case, if Kirk Cousins does get injured, then Kellen would be a spot starter, and hopefully he would not be the starter for a very long period of time, because there is a lot of maturing that Kellen has to do at the NFL level. This play was not good for Kellen and the Vikings, obviously because it was an interception, but the perhaps most concerning part was Kellen overthrew a 6'7 tight end by a pretty considerable margin, as you'll see on the replay right here, where Zach Davidson, the rookie tight end and fellow 2021 draftee with Kellen, didn't exactly have a shot at this, and the Minnesota Vikings drive was killed, granted it was a third down, and the pocket was breaking down, and by no means was this an easy throw to make, but it is one that not only has to be made, but if you are going to miss a throw this bad, it has to be Zach's ball or nobody's ball, and you can't overthrow a six foot seven tight end by the margin that Kellen did in this situation in an NFL game. From one not ideal play for the Vikings, we go to a good play for the Vikings. It was a 17 yard completion here and the two linebackers highlighted bite pretty hard on a play action fake and a reason why they kind of bite so hard and a reason why I highlighted this in not only today's video but also the last one on Kellen is this was a pretty typical zone coverage meaning that if there is a running play to be ran here that the linebackers are in good position and if it is a play action fake then the linebackers can very quickly just get right back into coverage. However, it's not like Kellen is this play-action masterful quarterback where he's going to have a prime Ray Lewis and Luke Keekley out there biting at every single play-action fake because that's really not the case and it was a pretty typical zone coverage. But what Kellen does here is he climbs the pocket in an inefficient manner and fires the ball to KJ Osborne for a 17-yard completion. And why I think the first play was not only worrisome because of overthrowing and behind a 6-7 target was also because Kellen missed him in a zone. Both of these plays were zone coverages, and Andy Reid didn't have his players out there last night playing 100% man coverage every single play, so if Kellen would have just thrown it in between the zone on the first play, it not only would not have been an interception, but it would have been a big play similar to what we have here. So what we have on this next play, not this one, but this one, is a beautiful read by Kellen on 3rd and 11 to get the ball to KJ Osborne, and quickly one thing I did want to highlight was the elite burst off of the line by the Chiefs defensive end as his first step was miles faster on this play than anyone else on the football field so credit to him because it shows in the footage here and I wish there was an all 22 angle to show how good of a throw this was by Kellen because he has to drop it in between the corner playing a shallow zone and a safety playing a deep zone and then of course KJ Osborne as you'll see makes a terrific sideline catch where he quickly gets both feet in bounds for a 17 yard gain and for a Vikings offense that did not have a lot of production to say the least in the preseason to see a good play like this was honestly refreshing and there was not a lot of good plays good highlight plays by this offense in the preseason as they simply didn't put up a lot of points there can be a few reasons attributed to that but for Kellen to be able to lob a ball and just and drop it in a bucket and this was a terrific throw and if there is a way for the Vikings to get Kellen more opportunities like this obviously situations have to prevail as not all the time our team's going to have holes in the zone that will allow Kellen to do this but Clint Kubiak has to be better in a sense for Kellen and I think we saw that a lot more in the third preseason game versus the first two because simply put the first two preseason games and especially that first one against Denver back in week one was absolutely 
ugly for the Vikings fans to see, and it was not a good showing for Kellen and the rest of the team for that matter. Now, there were a couple things attributed to that, and one of them was the Broncos starters playing a lot longer than what the Vikings did in that week one loss, as the final score was 33-6. to But back to this specific play, this was a great play by Kellen to be able to just drop a ball in a bucket, and it is encouraging to see things like this from Vikings fans and for the outlook moving forward. Now, earlier in the video, we broke down the interception Kellen had, and that was one of two turnovers on the night, as this play right here was a fumble recovery by the Chiefs. And if we go back about a minute, I said I was very impressed with the Chiefs' right end's explosiveness off the line and the acceleration as to which he moves up the field. And on this play, on this third and 20, he got around the left tackle and knocked the ball out of Kellen Mond's hand right as he was getting ready to throw, and then the Chiefs recovered. So so that acceleration in that first step by that defensive end was absolutely phenomenal and it showed up later in the game actually a couple of plays later and it was the reason why the Chiefs forced a turnover and I don't really think you can attribute this to Kellen being bad or having bad pocket awareness now does he have poor pocket awareness at times yes absolutely but you would be hard-pressed to see that every rookie has great pocket awareness at the quarterback position Kellen being no exception to that rookies simply have to take time to mature to the NFL level and the speed at which the game is played at, and I do think this is more on the left tackle than anything. Now, would you have liked to see Kellen at least move a little bit before the fumble? Yes, you would have liked to see Kellen at least move his feet a little bit, but in the same sense, he should have had it a little bit longer to throw, and this was poor pocket protection on the left side, given that it was a third and 20 situation. Everyone in the stadium knew it was either going to be a passing play or they were just going to run a halfback draw, and a lot of teams do run halfback draws on third and 20 and long plays like that just to try and get back some of the yardage, but given that it was the third preseason game, I really don't think it was a surprise that it was going to be a deep passing play to see what Kellen can do on those type of situations. So this next play that we have was a play during a 17 play 9 minute drive and it's a good example of what Kellen can do when there is time in the pocket and like any other quarterback for that matter if they're given a little bit of time at the NFL level then more than likely they're going to make a defense pay and Kellen hits Brandon Dillon on a beautiful ball that was a 19 yard first down completion over the middle of the field. The Chiefs were playing a zone coverage they only rushed four guys the Vikings had an empty set so there were five receivers going out for a pass and Kellen as we said hit Brandon Dillon over the middle for a big 19 yard completion and this type of play was a monumental difference versus when he did not have time and fumbled the ball or versus when he had to scramble out of the pocket or in the very first play that we broke down where a play where he had to throw it quickly and the result was a ball that was thrown high and behind his six foot seven target. So as we enter the regular season with the Vikings all three preseason games being behind them, I do want to say I do think the future is relatively bright for Kellen. Now, to think a third round pick is going to be a future star is a little lofty expectations, and I certainly do not think that. But I do think Kellen can be, at least in the 2021 season specifically, be a serviceable backup and kind of keep Kirk's plate a little warm. And I like this move for the Vikings to draft Kellen because there's plays that he can make that Kirk simply cannot when there are off-platform throws and there are plays that Kellen scrambles out of the pocket and Kellen did have a couple of scrambles last night that I simply didn't show because I feel like I don't need to show every single time he runs the ball and he had five attempts for 40 yards and I really feel like it's kind of a waste for me to break down a scramble when most of the time there's nobody open and Kellen takes what is given to him. So anyways, as we wrap up today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed and if you did i ask now that you like the video and subscribe to the channel as it would help the channel grow immensely and not only that it would mean the world so until next time if you ever have a video suggestion please let me know and until next time have a great day love you guys deuces peace